and the data utility description. Let's have a look at the main application and the fields that are commonly used. Mark with number one, we have the main search field, which is from a management perspective, we can say the driver for the entire application. A user wants to search for a new movie, add a new movie, edit a new, uh, an existing movie, we always say start from search. Even if the user knows that the movie is not found, start from there. Because if a movie is not found, metadata utility will prompt to whether or not the information should be downloaded directly online. Mark with number two, we have the main tab in the application. Mark with number three is the title of the film. Mark with number four is the field called title sub, shortened for title supplemental. That field is the actual field that will be used in Windows Media Center. So in most cases the title of the movie will be the same, but we will have examples in which, for example, we have a movie uh, the Last Samurai, and we bought a movie set that came with a letterbox format, a 4x3 format, and also an extra DVD. So that now we have a movie that has the same formation, the same ID, the same cast, the same director. However, we want to rename the title of the movie to show maybe the movie that is in letterbox format, the movie that is in director's cut format, or the movie that is in the 4x3 format, or mark the movie, the movie section or the DVD section that is actually the extras. So we can customize that title in this field, and that's exactly how it's going to be shown in Windows Media Center. Mark with number five is the date of release for any given film. And it's always written in a backwards format, starting with a year or digit, dash, followed by a two digit month, followed by a dash, followed by a two digit date of the month. So as long as the information is being automatically downloaded, this will be automatically pre-formatted. However, users have also the capability of entering that manually. If the information is not entered in the format as described, then it will not be shown properly. Windows Media Center. Moving on, mark with number six is the field WMC ID, which is a unique field assigned automatically by Metadata utility that works in the background. That's how metadata utility tracks records. Marked with number seven is a field called ID, which we see twice, mainly because that field number is the field that metadata utility uses to track the record data information. Metadata utility uses a relational database management system abbreviated for RDBMS, which stores the data in different locations. And in order to show the user the complete movie metadata information is being basically pulled from different tables, so to speak. In a fully automated form or usage, these fields, number six and number seven, will have very little importance to a user. However, for those advanced users or users that accidentally deleted information, re deleted records, they find themselves with records that we call orphan records or childless records, which we will have detailed videos and write-ups, uh, and we will see in, an, in, an, in other videos more detailed information 
as to how to troubleshoot and how to repair those records. But in those situations, that's where these fields will come into play. Mark with number eight is the cast. Mark with number nine is the director or directors. Mark with number 10 is the genre for a given film. Mark with number 11 is the overview of the film or description of the actual film. Number 12 is the actual tagline for the given film. Number 13 is the duration in minutes for the particular film. Mark with number 14 is the studio that is attached to the film. This is also a drop down box which we have a separate video that dives in into how these records are managed, these drop downs are managed. Moving on to number 15, there's another drop down menu for the data provider. Data data utility uses primarily the movie database, however, users may choose a different provider. In that case, they may want to reflect that, and that's where this field comes into play. Again, we have a separate video that dives into how to manage those lists, how to edit those lists, and other additional details. Marked with number 16, we have the MPAA rating, which is also a drop down, and for users that are outside the United States, and in their country, there may, be, there may be a different institution and a different rating system. Users then have the ability to edit this MPA rating, not only edit the actual drop-down menu, but also to rename MPAA to their abbreviated or their, their institution that is uh, in charge in their uh, country. We have also a detailed video how to uh, manage the renaming of the fields as well as managing the MPAA rating system. Mark with number 17, we have the community rating. And mark with number 18, we have the provider rating, which in most cases they will always be the same, but there may be occasions in which they may differ, especially when we have community-based metadata uh, source providers, such as the movie database, in which the users are actually providing with the content. And thus, the users are rating a movie that may differ from the rating that was given by the critics or the actual provider itself. Mark with number 19 is the XML ID, which is how Windows Media Center tracks the metadata information and links it to display for a particular movie. For a fully automated usage and management through metadata utility, this field again will have little importance to a user, however, for those users that have granular control and they actually manage manually and they create their own XML IDs, which is possible, that's where this will come into play. Um, similarly to WMC ID and the ID fields, the XML ID must be unique. So it's very common in Windows Media Center that sometimes users have duplicated movies or what they call ghost movies. For example, they have Last Samurai, only director's cut. When they open Windows Media Center, they see Last Samurai twice or three times. In most cases, that is due to the fact that they have created multiple XML IDs. And when that happens, Windows Media Center gets confused and will try to show the same movie three times. So we have 
detailed instructions as to how to troubleshoot such, such scenarios and how to clean them up, how to resolve those situations. But for the purposes of this field now is that we will bring that into attention for those particular users that have granular control over their troubleshooting, that will be the field that we'll be paying attention to. Moving on to number 20, a field marked with CHK, abbreviated for check. That's how in metadata utility users are able to select records, assign records to a particular queue. Queues, we have also a detailed video as to how those work, but basically we have a, a pending records queue, selected records, selected records, the records that we want to perform an action, whether it's creating XML information, doing a backup of the metadata information, or doing a restore, or updating movie information, and so forth. Other queues that we have are suspect queues, orphan records, um, as well as archive records. All those queues are basically managed through this field. And depending on the value that is on this field will depend where those records will land in which queue, in which bucket they will end up landing. Users will notice that if they attempt to delete the value of the CHK field, they will get immediately a message saying that that cannot be null. Users get that message, let's go back to the message again, then they will remember this part of the video. Mark with number 21, 22, and 23 are the path builder fields, which we also have detailed video as to how they work and how we use it. However, for purposes of this video, we will say that worth to point out that for the first path builder, number 21, as well as number 22, those are drop down boxes and we don't insert a backslash at the end of neither of the fields as well as we don't enter a backslash at the beginning on the second field itself we don't insert a backslash at the end of the actual third field those backslashes will be automatically inserted by metadata utility from which we will be seeing very shortly an example of. The third field is actually not a drop down box in this uh, path builder section, but instead is actually a field which the user can actually, if we actually go back before we were selected, we will see user can actually double click and it will open up a select folder where user can user can navigate to the actual location and click to select the particular location where the movie is stored. Once that, that has been completed, then the full path in Path Builder will be completed. And that's when we can actually go to the second part, tab in Metadata Utility called the Path section, which basically here we have it marked with the number 24, which basically shows a bunch of fields that are grayed out and they are grayed out because they can't not be manually edited. They are automatically populated based on the information. Let's go back to the main tab. Based on the information, based on the path builder information that was selected, then metadata utility builds automatically the full path. That's why we said originally don't insert a backslash in between the fields because as we go back to the path, the field for 25, we see that metadata utility has joined each one of those three fields and inserted the appropriate backslashes where it was required. For those users that actually use the application in a fully automated form, most of these fields will have little importance. However, for those users that have granular control or have an advanced uh, desire to manage or troubleshoot when problems arise, 
then these fields will come into play. Namely, video underscore TS is where the file or files for any given movie will be located. The actual physical, either ripped files or downloaded DVD will reside. This is not directly related or needed by metadata utility, but instead is required by Windows Media Center to properly identify movies display them properly. The other fields are also such as folder, folder.l displaying the actual name of the file that metadata utility will be synchronizing with Windows Media Center to allow it to display cover art information. That is almost similarly repeated in XML small and XML large. The only difference is only programmatically. Um, XML small is the actual text as you see it is exactly how it's going to be inserted in the XML file for those two records. For the cover art small, the thumbnail, as well as the larger uh, cover art file. The last two fields which are with a white background. They are white background because they are editable. That's an exception in this path. Those are the actual names of the actual files that will be used to download those files directly from the internet, directly online, and those files, once that they are downloaded, they will be renamed into folder in folder.l. In such cases that users want to use a different file. We have detailed information on how to do those kinds of granular or more advanced uh, control of the um, download of cover art information in other videos as well as in detailed documentation that we have available on our website. But for purposes of this part of the video, we can mention here that that would be where a user can actually enter a different name to have it download a different file and show it into Windows Media Center. Lastly, we have marked with number 31, a record selector, which allows users to navigate between records very easily. If we actually looked back at the number 25, Mark with number 25, the full path, and we actually go and double click on it. Windows Explorer will be automatically opened by metadata utility and will automatically open that path and show the contents of that location. In this particular case, it will show the files that are expected to be there. We were just talking about we have a folder underscore ts which is where the actual movie or movie files are supposed to be located for windows media center to properly identify that re that record as a movie we also see the actual xml file with its xml file id which as we mentioned has to be unique and we also see additional cover art information such as the folder as well as the uh, folder.l files that are used Windows Media Center to display the cover art information. Moving on to the next tab in the main uh, metadata utility uh, application, we see the tab called folder.jpg. We double click on that window. Uh, Windows Media Center basically has already theoretically the file that has been downloaded through metadata utility and metadata utility will actually reach and display that file 
so that a user can actually assess whether that file is the file that was actually indeed intended to be downloaded. This is only for those users that want granular control and want to have a quick overview directly from within metadata utility without having to open Windows Media Center and verify that the actual movie was properly synchronized with their cover art information, metadata information, etc. If the file is not found, user will be prompt so that the user can actually take the corrective action as needed. We actually move to the last tab, folder.l.jpg. We work in the same similar fashion as we just described for the previous app folder.jpg. The only difference is that it will show the larger cover art file that was downloaded, which in most cases it won't fit completely, but metadata utility will try to crop it and show as much as possible so that the user can see obviously the difference between the thumbnail size and the larger higher definition file that has been downloaded, which will be used by Windows Media Center to display the cover art movie information for a given movie. And if the file was not downloaded or is not found, it will get a message and the user will be able to troubleshoot and see why is the file not downloaded. In the case that clearly the path is incorrect, then can be taken the corrective action as needed. Otherwise, can actually go ahead and attempt to download the in information, in this case the file cover art information again directly online. We described briefly a few moments ago, we have marked with number 31, the actual record selectors to allow users to navigate and uh, also marked with 31 we have an advanced searched function at the bottom of the main application which is designed for advanced users that want again granular control control able to search in within an already searched subset group and to make things easier we always as always we say users you want to search for a movie start from the top However, for those users that are used to granular control, then this field will come into play. We have also a detailed write-up in which we actually diving into detailed information on how to use this field properly. For more information on any of the topics that we just briefly described, or detailed information on any of the particular fields or the functionalities that we just briefly overviewed. We welcome our users to visit our website at metadatautility.com for more information or also click on any of the other videos that we have also available online. Thank you for watching.